I think what Stefan's asking is about glycation versus glycolization, like what the key differences are. Um, so one, I believe, will happen within the cellular structures of the organelles themselves. And one will happen on protein structures of the body. So it's got a slightly different effect as, as to how they, those two things come about. And like those, those reactions come about. So mm. one of them is mm. enzymatic and one of them isn't. I think mm. the enzymatic one is, is it glycation? But I can't remember. It's going no, back to the bit. glycosylation. Yeah, it's the yeah. yeah, it's the glycosylation. It's basically the, the your the your you're actually putting sugar molecules specifically to connecting them to these um these lipid protein structures. So and they have little sugar molecules that have that then play some sort of role for with the or it's signaling or whether it's basically creating a sort of uh, um, being able to be utilized to, to change the potential so at the tip which then creates like a negative charge to allow things to repel each other these are the sort of things that we understand at this stage up to the science at this stage where glycation is just generally you know sugar running through the bloodstream excess you 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 engage the randall cycle and then the and that affects the gradient of glycation how long do mm. the too much excess sugar stays in the bloodstream and ends up sticking on all protein structures all over the place and also lipoproteins and all that that also causes mm. more stickiness where things can actually then stick and not basically move slowly and that could also cause some damage to the apob which means then that could end up deranging the lipoproteins and you know so and that it really comes from the most glycating thing which is fructose honey and fruit the worst carbohydrates you can put in your body in terms of glycation factor do you think it's low uh, yep yeah sorry Harry, do you think that um fruits more glycating or more inflammatory because it can't be stored like glucose, like you know other things. Is that why? Because it doesn't go for the same metabolic Precisely. process. So it just goes wherever it can go, basically. Yeah, yeah. Until it actually gets back to the liver and gets processed, um, it's like alcohol. It goes through the same pathway as alcohol or fructose, and so mm. it is inflammatory to the body and glycating. Um, for that and yeah. for alcohol it's just poison it's just excess amount that goes around does cause um a lot of damage cellular damage it and in, in that way we're sort of saying loss of electrons and stuff like that the sort of oxidative stress yeah. that we're talking about um but uh, yeah and, and it also it does vary obviously let's say somebody's on a carnival diet and has a few berries that's not going to be a real big problem okay but if somebody basically then has you know half a watermelon or you know a whole lot of you know fruit juice or stuff like in particular fruit juice or honey or stuff like that things that are very high in that that's going to be more of a problem and then how bad it is now let's say i have a, a glass of fruit juice and somebody who's diabetic and engaging the Randall cycle on a daily basis also has a glass of fruit juice. The fructose in that fruit juice, to me, will cause something around, somewhere around seven-fold glycation compared to someone. Uh, that means where sugar molecules are sticking all over a whole lot of proteins, where they shouldn't be and because they shouldn't be in those places where they're sticking because they're not being you know sugar should go and go to muscles and go basically to you know your brain and places like that if there's too much circulating that means the transit time becomes longer it has more time to glycate to stick mm. So even glucose yeah. will have some level of glycation, but it's very low. But when you engage the Randall cycle, on the other hand, 
you amplify because you don't you can't take it up as fast so it circulates in the bloodstream for longer which basically yeah. means you can actually get a glycating effect of tenfold so randall cycle activation tenfold non-randall cycle activation sevenfold that's why in the past i used to say sevenfold but that's old science when people were less engaging the Randall cycle on a regular basis back in the 50s and 60s times like that. Unfortunately, now people are on a constant Randall cycle um, merry-go-round 24-7, um, and that means you've got these sugar molecules circulating in your bloodstream for far too long. And that actually ends up creating higher levels of glycation. So glucose will also, under those sort of circumstances, will be more glycating than glucose that is circulating somebody without engaging the Randall cycle in any big way. So in a sense, somebody who's on a vegan diet not engaging the Randall cycle, the glucose circulating in their bloodstream will be less glycating. Where somebody who basically is on a standard diet, on the other hand, this is why vegans go, oh, you know, when they're in the honeymoon and they do these ex um, tests, they go, oh, I had less glycation, I had less this or that compared to a standard diet. Well, that's because you're not engaging the Randall cycle. They are. And so the circulation is staying in the system for longer. And so it's glycating more. That's all it is. But it doesn't make it healthier yeah. than you or them. It's just less deleterious in you because you're not engaging the Randall cycle. And just because you're ignorant of the Randall cycle, it doesn't mean you can actually then sit on your high horse and make out that you're healthier than the rest, <laughs> which is what they do. Yeah. Did you see my meat, uh, fruit, and uh, honey experiment oh, video? I need to that, It kind no, of explains it because I was doing... I haven't had a chance. So, so if I did that same diet that I did, but had a bag of Skittles rather than fr meat, fr uh, fruit and honey, I'd have had a better effect, I think. Um, it didn't make sense that I had about 250 grams of carbs um, from fruit and honey, and I felt so bad considering. And I used to have like a 1,000 grams of carbs, but I didn't have nearly as much fruit. Oh, so I remember, I remember you saying something on, on Bart's channel about it. You actually yeah. mentioned something on Bart's about that experiment that you did. Yeah, but I haven't actually seen the fruit the honey the for me. It was crap. Yeah, I'll, I'll send it to you or something. But that that was quite um quite an interesting anecdote. Yeah, to yeah me. I'll, I'll take I, a look I obviously at knew it. what happened, but I was surprised it happened that quickly. So I thought I'm going to so try you it gotta, for seven days. You got you yeah you yeah. yeah so Karen, what are, what were the symptoms that you were getting compared to glucose? Um, yeah, so what I had a, a banging headache. My lips were really dry. My face swelled out a bit. My knees and toes were very sore. Um, my skin started to get a bit drier on my wrists as usual. And I couldn't really sleep much the first, well, I'd say the, latter, the last two out of three nights. Um, and I was like, I was really shocked by that. I, I thought something bad would happen. I didn't do it um, thinking anything good would happen, but I, I did it for inf informational purposes. And yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was, I'd have rather done that same experiment with Skittles. I think I would have enjoyed it more. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, look, the, the thing is, um, uh, you know, people need to realise that um, fructose is, you know, deleterious of the mitochondria and the energy production. So, you know, that's well established in the literature. So anybody that actually argues for a high fructose diet needs their head examined. It actually amplifies the Randall cycle and makes it far worse. It's what actually forces the insulin to glucagon ratio when somebody's, if somebody's engaging the Randall cycle with excess, let's say, fruit, um, not fructose, excess glucose and excess fat, they'll engage the Randall cycle but, and they'll build up a lot of subcutaneous fat. You know, the stuff, the outer stuff. Less, um, you know, not the visceral stuff and not, and not, um, uh, and not liver fat. So that's what happens when you're actually with glucose and you can store heaps of glucose in your liver. The liver is really good and in your muscles. So you can you can deal with it much better. You can't store fructose in your liver, you know, or your muscles. You've got to process it and turn it into something. And that's the problem with 
um, whether it's like like alcohol, it's a, it's a poison, it has to get out of the system. Small about different parts of the body, even your, let's say your sperm uses a bit of fructose, but small amounts, but the body can produce that in the liver and provide it. So that's not an issue. But we're talking about excessive amounts. Um, it doesn't surprise me at all that you would have had, I didn't realise that bad, um, but I'm not surprised that you would have had far worse symptoms compared to um, glucose because glucose may be Randall cycle engaging have some glycating factor but glucose mm. is not poisonous to the body okay we need to be quite clear about that we're talking about Randall cycle which is a different thing that's fat storage turning glucose into fat and storing it but we're not talking to the subcutaneous tissue but we're not talking about glucose basically um that's why you can have you know people that are fat and obese and be because more subcutaneous rather than visceral because they don't they only eat potatoes and you know and be very muscular fat but not be unhealthy and you see that with the old mm -hmm. russian ladies that used to eat potatoes and meat you know and so they yes they had more subcutaneous fat for a rainy day which they never never came but at the same time, they didn't have any visceral fat problems or liver fat problems. So, you know, glucose in a Randall cycle engaged is an issue in terms of fat storage, but in terms of as a molecule, it's not damaging to the body, so to speak. To claim that is just ridiculous, you know. Mm. But we don't need to eat it because we can produce it. And humans yeah. only in recent history have been consuming it. Um, what, you know, it's not our species appropriate way of getting it from starch. We can produce it ourselves from the glycerol black bone of um, triglycerides. So we do not need to eat it. But at the same time, it's yeah. not like fructose. So I'm not, I'm not surprised, but it's uh, interesting. Yeah, people can get a lot yeah. of different symptoms, but yeah, you, you probably got the whole lot. Bloody hell. Yeah, it was That's horrible. Severe. I wouldn't do that Shit. again. I plan, I plan to do it for seven days. Excellent. After day one, I was like, I'm not going to do seven days. I thought, well, I'll do four foot. Nah, I'll do three days, and that was a real push that I had to plow through that. And I didn't enjoy it more. I didn't feel well mm -hmm. having three. It, it wasn't exciting at all. It was just like, this is a chore. So, yeah. 